The U.S. Department of Justice and 30 states are suing the owner of Ticketmaster. They're accusing Live Nation of exercising, quote, monopolistic control. Music fans have been complaining for years about inflated ticket prices. Richard Madden has more about the lawsuit and its implications from Washington. Well, Attorney General Merrick Garland is taking on America's biggest player in the live concert business. The Department of Justice is suing Live Nation, accusing it of running an illegal monopoly and calling for its breakup from Ticketmaster. Now, Garland says the company abuses its market dominance by controlling all aspects of the business, from promotion, access to venues, and, of course, ticket sales. He says this unlawful practice hurts performers, stifles competition, and most importantly, he says, squeezes fans by tacking on outrageous fees on ticket prices. Live Nation Ticketmaster has made itself ubiquitous in the live entertainment industry. It controls at least 80% of primary ticketing at major concert venues. It directly manages more than 400 artists and controls more than 60% of concert promotions across the country. And it owns or controls more than 60% of large amphitheaters in the United States. We allege that to sustain this dominance, Live Nation relies on unlawful, anti-competitive conduct. Now, the DOJ began investigating Live Nation about two years ago after Ticketmaster's disastrous rollout of Taylor Swift concert tickets. Legions of angry fans complained of long waits in the queue and massive service fees attached to the few tickets that weren't already scooped up by scalpers or bots. Now, in response to this lawsuit, Live Nation called the allegations baseless, a short-term public relations win for the DOJ that won't solve ticket prices or in-demand shows. Now, this latest move is part of the Biden administration's aggressive strategy to create more competition from big tech to big pharma. And if the feds are successful with this lawsuit, the breakup could dramatically reshape the concert industry some 14 years after regulators first approved the merger. Richard Madden, CBC News, Washington. Now, along with fans, other promoters and music artists have long complained about Live Nation's alleged monopoly. The president and CEO of Canadian Independent Music told CBC News how the situation has hurt artists. And he spoke about how small and mid-sized promoters are also impacted. These promoters are, are really imp an important part of the, of the nurturing of, the, of artists' careers. And, and frankly, I think they're being squeezed uh, out by by what's happening with um, you know with, with the situation with Live Nation. So so now that affects the artists for artists for for newcomers. It's particularly difficult because there's this confluence of this corporate consolidation on the on the live side with Live Nation, and on top of that, crazy real estate uh, prices in in downtown areas where clubs tend to be. And so uh, there's fewer and fewer places to play. I hear artists say the craziest things like, hey, maybe we should just buy, uh, you know, 100, 100 tickets uh, and then resell them on, a, on one of these, you know, on one of these other um, platforms to make a bit of money. I mean, this is what's happening right now. That was the president and CEO of Canadian Independent Music. He added that while artists are not actually buying and reselling tickets, that is a conversation that's taking place because of Live Nation's alleged monopoly. Well, for more on how this affects the industry, we are joined now by antitrust expert Ron Knox. He is a senior researcher and writer at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. We reach him tonight in Kansas City, Missouri. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks. This is something that you have been calling for for years. Let's start with your reaction to the fact that this is now finally happening. Well, look, I mean, this is an enormous day for the live music industry. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, fans have been clamoring uh, for many, many years, along with artists, with promoters, with small music venues for the Department of Justice to essentially reopen its investigation into the merger uh, between Live Nation and Ticketmaster, uh, and indeed to look at the way that combined company has abused uh, its market power over the last nearly 15 years. 
Um, that's what happened. And the result of that investigation is this lawsuit. And, you know, clearly the, you know, the government found enough evidence of that alleged wrongdoing um, to sue. And when they sued, they sued with the intention uh, of breaking up this company and dividing it into pieces, which is exactly uh, what folks in the industry, uh, you know, have really been asking for. So huge day for the industry. So, so talk to me a little bit about what evidence the government would have right now that they feel they've got enough here to bring this forward. Sure. Well, basically what the government found um, was that Live Nation and its you know, subsidiary Ticketmaster leveraged its power in a few different markets to essentially bully venues uh, into using um, you know, its Ticketmaster uh, ticketing platform and to force fans, you know, music fans all over the world, you know, basically, to pay whatever fees Ticketmaster decided it was going to charge for those tickets. The important thing to keep in mind here is that Live Nation is the largest concert promoter the largest artist manager and the second largest venue owner and operator uh, in America, and I believe on the continent. When you have that kind of power uh, over artists, over huge tours, you can basically dictate what small venues have to do in order to access those artists and those tours and, you know, and to promote those. And it said you have to use Ticketmaster, and because of that, Ticketmaster can charge whatever it wants. That is, uh, under the law, uh, a monopoly violation, and that's basically what the lawsuit says. So, so Ticketmaster here says that this is not going to lead to lower ticket prices or service fees. Uh, I don't know if you heard the item uh, there earlier from our Richard Madden, but they essentially said that you know this is a publicity stunt for uh, the government right now, for the Department of Justice. Yeah, no, I, I understand, and I'm, I'm sure Ticketmaster did say that. Look, the way that you get lower prices for anything is that you inject more competition into the market, and that's exactly what this lawsuit is intending to do. At the moment, venues and artists and fans have no choice but to use Ticketmaster. They have an 80% share of the U.S. ticket market. I'm sure it's just as high throughout the continent, and and that's you know unavoidable. So, of course, Ticketmaster can charge whatever it wants and fans simply have to suck it up and pay it or they don't get to go to the shows and anyone who's bought a concert ticket knows that that is exactly the case what this lawsuit would do and what breakup would do was is essentially to um, allow you know the promoter the venues to choose whichever ticketing service they want allowing new startup ticketing services existing smaller ticketing services to grow and to potentially offer lower fees a much better fan experience and that's really what you know this lawsuit is about for Ticketmaster to say it's a publicity stunt is really disingenuous there's a lot of evidence in the lawsuit that shows that they uh, indeed may you know may very well have broken the law so Ticketmaster merged with Live Nation in uh, 2011, which is uh, where many of these issues began. Walk me through here what happens next in this process with this lawsuit. Sure. It's going to go through a normal, you know, civil litigation process. Um, there will be, you know, motions to dismiss, motions for summary judgment. That's going to essentially be Ticketmaster and Live Nation trying to get the suit thrown out of court. If it survives all of those, then eventually it'll go to a trial and there will be evidence and there will be a decision. What the Department of Justice has asked for very specifically in this lawsuit is for the breakup of, of, of this company. And what the Department of Justice says is at a minimum, they want you know, the ticketing service, they want Ticketmaster to be removed from Live Nation. So separated from the artist management, the promotion and the venues as a way to re-inject competition into the industry. You know, the court could certainly decide that um, a further remedy is necessary. Maybe it decides to separate the, you know, the company into, uh, into smaller pieces and that that would be another way to fix these alleged issues. Um, but at a minimum, what the government wants uh, is breakup, and ultimately the court will decide whether that's what happens. All right. We're going to be following this one for a while, it seems. Uh, Ron, appreciate your time tonight. That is Ron Knox, a senior researcher and writer at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. He joined us this evening from Kansas City, Missouri.